Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another week of WCM Interactive. We are so glad that you guys have decided to join us on tonight. Um, as many of you guys know, this is not this is time well spent on a Thursday night at seven o'clock. If you haven't yet joined us for our Bible study series on testimonies, boy, you've been you done missed a lot of great testimony. So I just want to encourage you to go back and watch the replays because my, 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 the spirit has truly been moving since we started this series mm -hmm. in October on testimonies. So a few quick announcements and we're going to be getting uh, started with our Bible study. Um, again, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, I did put up a post the other day to remind everybody that you can invite others to join this page, especially if they are not connected to a church or a ministry and they want to get connected to a Bible study. Be sure to invite them here. There's an invite button on the screen and all you have to do is invite your friends on Facebook to join. We meet here every Thursday at seven o'clock p.m. Also too, you can um, post on this page. You can post encouraging messages, prayer requests. Uh, be sure to be mindful of your post, uh, meaning not to post too much, but you can post. Uh, this is a community and we want to be sure to support one another. Um, on tomorrow night, I will be preaching. Well, I will be engaging. As Elder says, I might treat. That's teaching and preaching, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, tomorrow night at seven o'clock on our business page, not on this page, our business page, Wise Choice Ministries. Tomorrow is going to be a very special um, night because we have changed our Friday nights and they're called Engage, Engage. And why are they called Engage? Because you will be able now to come on live and interact with the discussion on Friday nights at seven o'clock. And what the Lord put in my spirit to talk about tomorrow is America, the great mission field. Mm -hmm. America, the great Amen. mission field. How Amen. many of y'all know that now, if ever it was a time Amen. for a missionary work in America, it's now. Right. Amen. Now. So um, join me tomorrow at seven o'clock if you have questions or comments. You can join that discussion. And then um, on Saturday, uh, Elder Morrison, she's going to be uh, sharing on Facebook at, as well. She would give you information about that event on Saturday. This Saturday at 6 o'clock, Elder? Yes, seven. This Saturday at 6 o'clock on Facebook Live. We yes. have shared that flyer. Okay, yes. on Zoom? Yes, it's going to be on Zoom. Okay. Mm -hmm. That flyer should be on this page timeline. So scroll down the page and all the information is on the flyer. Right. So Elder Morrison, are you ready? I am ready. You're ready? Wait, before we get started, we have we have everybody on the line. Look like everybody's wearing their pink. <laughs> Even the men. Look at the men got their pink on. Yeah. Real yeah. men wear pink. Right. Yeah, we, we have to represent. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Hmm. But, and again, for those who's out there that would like that's wearing your pink at home, I know some of y'all just comfortable being on Facebook Live, but you can come in for a few seconds and show us your pink. You can jump on the Zoom call and jump right back off, but show your support tonight. Elder mm -hmm. Morrison, that's it. It's all mm -hmm. yours. Amen. Amen. Well, we bless God. I thank God for everyone that that is here tonight. Um and we're going to continue in our series of, of testimonies. And so we're going to go ahead and get started so the Lord can just go ahead and do what he wants to do, because we've been having an awesome time on Thursday night. So, Father, we bless you. We give you glory, God. We thank you, God, for who you are. We thank you, God, that we are yet alive and have a testimony that gives you the glory and glorifies you, God. We thank you that you are the Lord God, our healer, God. You're the Lord God, our way maker, God. And we just bless your name. And we just thank you, God, for all the benefits that you have afforded us, your people, by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And so, God, we thank you for what will be spoken on tonight, God. I pray that somebody 
somebody's heart and mind is encouraged on tonight, God, that someone that needs to be strengthened, God, that they will be strengthened through the testimonies of God. We give you the glory and we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So my uh, uh, Bible study um, lesson on to tonight, we had to pick somebody in the Bible that uh, we could identify with as far as our testimony. And the woman that I identified with was the woman with the issue of blood. Um, and I, that's going to be coming from Mark, the fifth chapter, the 25th through the 29th. And I'm going to look at the 30. 33 to 34 verse. Um, amen. And um, I'm going to go ahead and read it. And then we're going to go ahead. And it says a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment, for she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. She felt it in her body that she was healed of that plague. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Amen. And so... I identify with her because her situation was a desperate situation. She was in a situation that was desperate. Um, the Bible had told us that after, after she went to on the doctor's appointment, after she had the tests done, after the results came back, after the diagnosis, um, the question now becomes now what? And I can identify with that because you know, my going through after, after all of that, now what? But in her case, amen, the Bible says that she had this issue for 12 years and she sought the um, medical help, medical attention from many physicians that the Bible said. And it said that she has spent all that she had. So every, every, you imagine that if you had your money that you have now, if you had to spend all of that money that you had on trying to seek a cure, trying to seek healing for whatever ails you. And now you have spent all your money. Now you have no more money and you're not even cured. My God, my God, can you only imagine that? Can anybody imagine that? That you've spent every dime that you had and you're still no better than when you started out. Amen, hallelujah. So anyhow, I'm gonna go on, nobody can identify, <laughs> hallelujah. And so she was sick. And, and because of her condition, um, she, she couldn't be around people. So she had to be in isolation for 12 years. I Means she couldn't go around nobody. Her family couldn't come around her. She couldn't go around nobody. There was no birthday celebration. There was no girlfriend, let's get together. Oh God, there was no Christmas get together. There was no Thanksgiving get together because her condition made her um, ceremonially, ceremonially unclean according to the Levitical laws. And the Levitical laws said that if you had a, a flow or a discharge, you were unclean and you had to set out um, for a certain amount of days until your flow or uh, your issue stopped. And then after I think it was seven days, then you can come back among your people. And so if she's um, having an issue for 12 years, mean that she, she never could go around people. So now she is in isolation. Have you ever experienced anything in your life that was so devastating to you that you felt like you were in isolation? Can I have any witness on the line that you felt like that you were in isolation, that no one could understand what you were going through? No one could give you words of comfort about your situation or even about what to do with your situation. Glory to God. And I really identify with her. So anyhow, so according, um, verse 27 tells us that when she had heard about Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. She said, if I may touch but his clothes, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, 
I shall be made whole. Now I can imagine in my mind, cause you know, I just let my mind go, hallelujah. Which every, now, first of all, I have to say she, she heard that Jesus was coming. I don't know how she heard it. I, I don't know where she heard it from, but the important thing is she heard about Jesus and Jesus was coming through town, glory to God. That's all she knew. And that's all she needed to know because then it said that she told herself, she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know that I can be made whole. She had a made up mind that she was gonna go. Now, according to the law, she couldn't be in the crowd, glory to God. According to the law, she couldn't touch nobody. Hallelujah, because of her condition. Sometimes there are situations that you will face in your life, whether it be sickness or anything else, that you are so desperate, glory to God, that you're going to do what you have to do to seek the remedy that you need to seek for whatever ails you, glory to God. So she got in the press, the Bible says, and I can imagine with each step, now there's a song that I love, it's called Only God Can Do It. Hallelujah. And I think the lady's first name is Renee. I can't think of her last name right now, but the song is a fast song. She's talking about only God can do it. Hallelujah. Only God can do it. He can do anything but fail. And I can imagine when this woman got in the press, glory to God, and she saw the crowds of people, she got in the press and she began to say, I believe with each step she was saying, only God can do it. Hallelujah. Only God can do it. I could just imagine that in my mind that with every step she took glory to God now you got to think that she's been bleeding for 12 years she's got to be weak she's got to be tired glory to God but she made a bold desperate move and said I am going to go out on faith glory to God I believe that if I touched her she had to be telling herself something to continue that walk to get to Jesus glory to God and so the Bible says that when she got there hallelujah glory to God as each step that she took, she was activating her faith, glory to God. Each step that she took, she was saying, God, I know you're a healer. Each step she was taking, she said, God, I know you're going to do this thing. Each step she was taking, she said, I know I'm going to be made whole. I know you're going to heal me, glory to God. And she got in the press, glory to God. Hallelujah. And then when she made it, glory to God, she didn't make an open show of, oh, Jesus, come on, heal me, touch me, Lord. She got down and touched, glory to God, the hem of his garment. She touched the bottom part of her of, of his cloak that they wore back those times because they wore a cloak on top of their clothes, glory to God, that had the tassels on it, sort of like what our prayer shawls look like today. And she touched the hem of his garment, glory to God. And I believe that while she down there, she got down there, glory to God, probably because she was weak. Now, this is what my mind says because she was weak, glory to God. But when she got down there and touched the hem of that garment, hallelujah, hallelujah, the Bible says, glory to God, she was instantly healed. She gained her strength, glory to God. Hallelujah. And straightway, the Bible says, and I like that word straightway. It says straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Straightway, that thing happened immediately. She touched it straightway. Glory to God. She was healed. Glory to God. She felt that she was healed. Nobody told her she was healed. She felt that she was healed. Glory to God. So her testimony now changed from, I know God can do it to God can do anything. Hallelujah. Her testimony changed to God can do anything but fail. Glory to God. God can free. God can heal. God can deliver. Why? Because she was healed. Glory to God. And verse 34 says, and Jesus said to her daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Glory to God. So he confirmed and acknowledged her healing right there. I believe he confirmed to the people that was around looking because you know they knew about her situation. You know that they was ready. You, you know how people are. They were ready to say, what you doing here? You don't need to be touching Jesus. Get back, get back, unclean. According to the law, this is what they would do. Unclean, you don't need to be around us. But Jesus validated her, glory to God, right in the presence of everyone and told her thy faith, glory to God, has made thee whole, glory. Go in peace, hallelujah. She was healed of her plague. And so I bless God. So she touched Jesus with her faith. 
Hallelujah. Is there anybody on the line tonight that has a situation that they need to touch Jesus? Glory to God. That they need God to show up. Hallelujah. In their situation. Is there anybody on the line? <clears throat> Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, anybody. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just like he did it for her, he can do it for others. God is concerned about our healing, both physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Uh, when she touched God with her faith, glory to God. Hallelujah. We know that with anything that we face, God is a deliverer. God is a healer. And so when she walked away, I can imagine her testimony now, not only was she healed, she was restored. Now she could have fellowship again. Now she could be a part of her family. Now she can go to the sanctuary because even then when you were unclean, you couldn't even go to the synagogue. You couldn't even go to worship God. And so with her being restored, now she was able to go and fellowship among the brethren, amongst her sisters, amongst her brothers, amongst the other people, glory to God. And so I tell you today, whatever ails you, God not only provides a remedy, but he is the remedy, glory to God. Be made whole, determine in your mind that you're going to be made whole and no more issues. I bless God, hallelujah. And that's the end of the lesson. But why I identify with this, oh, I'm going to take a pause in case anybody have any comments. Hallelujah. I need some comments, some feedback. Glory. Uh, to, I love this, this lesson because uh, she refused to be denied. You know, mm. she, she, there were so many obstacles in her way, but she would not allow those obstacles to get to what she needed. You know, um, fear could have set in and she would have been remembering, well, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm not supposed to be in this situation because the crowd, because of the laws. She didn't let laws and rituals stop her from getting to the other side of her healing, which was Jesus. Right. So uh, she pressed through. And that's what we have to do in situations like this. Uh, um, with that we're in when things are coming up against us we have to refuse to be denied we have to speak it into existence she said if I could just touch that was her faith speaking and it caused her to push through to receive the blessing that she needed amen 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 amen, amen. I think Pastor Wallace is talking you're on mute Okay. Mute yourself, Pastor Wallace. Yeah. Okay. Well, <clears throat> we're sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, D. I'll wait till you. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. You start and go ahead. Um, is I can I can relate to um uh and I'm in agreement with uh evangelist uh Sophia. I can, I, and you asked the question earlier, uh, can we relate to a character, biblical character? Mm -hmm. And I relate to Jonah. And I can just say, well, you can run, it was, you can run, but you can't hide. And I have a Jonah experience. But um, the, the, the woman with the issue of blood, I can remember when I was in the hospital and it was real. Couldn't talk, couldn't walk, couldn't, couldn't do anything. I've given the testimony. And here comes another, I had dope, I had pneumonia twice and other things you know about. And then here comes a doctor that comes in the hospital. He looked just like President Obama. And I told him, he said, well, I have some sad news. He said, you got cancer as well. You got mm -hmm. bone cancer. Now this was very shocking to me because I didn't have a clue. And um, uh, in that moment, I, you know, I had to rely on my faith. I was relying on my faith at all, all the time and I had people coming and praying for me, and I didn't even know they was in the room. They was praying for me. Uh, mm -hmm. um, Deacon Ron, Pastor uh, Sh Shana, uh, my wife. She wasn't my wife then, and many people were praying, and I didn't even know they was there. Mm -hmm. But in those moments, I relied on God, and my faith was just like her, the woman uh, with the issue of blood. I had to have that faith 
because that's what I had to hold on to. I had to, that was my anchor was faith in God. And um, that's my testimony about, and it carried me on even today. Even today, um, uh, I, I take maybe 20, uh, 20 uh, medications a day. You know, and God is so good. And I'm, I'm so full of enthusiasm, I'm a happy, I'm a happy camper because the experience I have with God, you know, so I'm in a full agreement with uh, with, with, with uh, Vangelis just said and what you are teaching us about to have faith in God, hold on no matter what and, and no matter what, because God, uh, he's the same yesterday and he's the same today. And he'll never mm -hmm. ever uh, forsake us. Yes, yes. And you know, I can relate to that one with the issue of blood because about 10, 11 years ago, my baby boy was murdered. Oh, when I, when I found went to the hospital, my baby boy was dead. It's, I felt like somebody snatched my heart out. I just cried and cried. I laid prostrate on my face. I said, Lord, you got to get me out of this. I said, because I don't want to live in this pain. This is too much pain. Mm -hmm. But God is so good. God oh, delivered yeah. me out of that. And I go around and testify to people who lost a loved one. And years after that, my husband was dying. I heard a voice came to me early one morning and said, get your house in order. My, house, my husband was dying. I took him to the hospital. And at the same time, the doctor called me and said, Mary, you know you have breast cancer? I said, what? Oh, she God. said, yeah, both breasts. I said, well, okay, what you want me to do? She told me to go, come to the office and go to this doctor. I went to that doctor and the doctor said, well, you know, it's going to be a task because you got it in both breasts. So I said, well, no, you're not going to burn me. Mm. He walked me all the way to the door. No, 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 I can do it. I said, no, you're not going to burn me. I mm. came home. I felt prostrate on my face. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, if you want me to have breast cancer, so be it. It's two things I ask you. Don't let me suffer. And when I die, I want eternal life with you. I got up. I went back out to the hospital. I gave it to God. I did not cry. I gave it to God because I know God is higher than cancer. Mm -hmm. I went back to the hospital. I held my husband's hand. I said, Bill, I'm not going to leave you. The doctor was looking for me. I stayed with my husband about three weeks. Then he passed away. I buried my husband. Then I went back to the doctor. The doctor said, well, well Ms. Bank, where you been? We were looking for you. We want to know what you're going to do. I said, cut them off. No, no, you can't cut them off. All you have to do to go to the proton building and this and that. I said, no, 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 cut them off. Well, Ms. Bank, you know this is very serious. You're going to be a bleeder. I heard the boss of God say, you is not a bleeder. So mm -hmm. I said, no, 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 cut them off. So I, told, I asked the doctor, I said, do you have faith? She said, yeah. I said, you can do it. She said, yeah. I lift up my head. I held her hand and I prayed to God for her. We had went to surgery for seven hours. When I came out the surgery, the doctor was leaning on my bed. She said, Mac, we didn't have to cut your breath off. We took the, em the elements out of it. And she Thank said, you, you know, you barely bled. Thank you, Jesus. There was nobody you, Jesus. Jesus. And when Thank I went back for my six yeah. week checkup, she said, oh my God, look how you heal. She said, you don't have to take chemo. You don't have to take pills. She said, bye. Praise God is so God. good. If you got that faith in God, faith will move mountains. And that's Amen. just what God has done for me. So anything come in my life or in my way, any trials or tribulation, I fall prostrate on my face and I talk to God about it. Because we have a seal on us. As faith in God, we have a seal. And nothing come our way unless God allow can harm us. And that's my testimony. Hallelujah. Amen. I give Lord God God. Glory. Amen. Amen. That's my testimony. Amen. Amen. Glory Amen. be to God. Hallelujah. You, um, Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Awesome testimony. Awesome testimony. Thank you, Lord. But you know what? All of us on here, and I look at everybody on here, have awesome testimonies um, of, mm -hmm. um, of what God has done. Um, I want to share my, I want to say hi to Mother Kitty. 
And I think I saw Melissa, I want to say hi to her that they are on the line. Amen. How are you doing? Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Mother Kitty said, got to have faith that God will heal your body. Yes. Amen. Amen. And she's right about mm -hmm. that. And I remember, I want to share my testimony. Um, I was uh, diagnosed with breast cancer in 2018. And um, so that's why the woman with the issue of blood, it just, you know, I can relate to her. And in 2018, when I was diagnosed, um, I had went through some challenges before that. And in 2017, I had just it finished by, I had a divorce in 2017. I sold my house that we had lived in for like 12 years. Um, went on that September, went on this first time cousins cruise with all of my cousins and we had a ball, you know, we gonna do it again next year. And there was just so many things that happened in 2017, lost one of my favorite aunts in 2017. Um, and so, you know, so after all of this was over, this is me now, 2018 is going to be my year, okay? Oh, this is my year. But when I went to the doctor and I went for my mammogram and they, they wanted me to come back and do some other testing and stuff. And, you know, it, it wasn't unusual. I, you know, I, I, that's what they do. And so when I went there, there just was something about it that was different is all I can tell you. It was just something different. And as I laid on the table, and I remember they came in to do a biopsy and there was two workers plus the nurse and the doctor, the doctor was a woman doctor, came in and she said, can we do everything today and not reschedule you since you're here is what she said. And I just felt like something, something, something okay, something, okay. So I, I agreed to it. And in a long story short, when it was over, I was very emotional um, and, and the whole thing. And then I get the call that that they did find the breast cancer and so this was in june 2018 and so i remember sitting there like oh god you know because surely this was my year that's what i was thinking and i was like oh god you know there's so many things running through your mind about the ifs and what's and i remember uh sitting on the side of the bed one day and I remember just talking to God and, and just saying, I never said, God, why? And this, you know, I never charged God like that, but I was just like, God, we're here. What are we going to do? You know, and I was honest with God. I told God, and I was honest with God. I said, I don't want to die. And I said, God, I don't want chemo and I don't want radiation. And there were some things that I'm just getting teary eyed now. And there's some things that I just told God that I wanted. And um, I, I, even in during that time, and see, sometimes when you're going through, you have to quiet the noise around you because mm -hmm. everybody's mm -hmm. got an opinion about what you should do and how you should do it. Mm -hmm. So I had to quiet people down. Um, you know, I, everybody didn't know. I didn't make no announcement. You know, just my intimate circle knew about it. And I just began to just say, God, now what? What are we gonna do, Jesus? And, and I was sitting there and I, you know, was going for the second opinion. You know, my family was like, you gotta have a second opinion. You gotta have a second opinion. And, oh, okay. So anyhow, I'm gonna tell you about the second opinion. The first way God showed up. I had went to, I called this doctor and they were going to do a second opinion. And so I faxed them all the paperwork and the consent and everything. They was gonna get me in right away um, to get the second opinion because my surgery was scheduled in July. I want you to know up to this day, I still ain't heard from them people, right? Okay, so anyhow, <laughs> but I'm gonna show you how God worked that thing. So I had called my GYN doctor, who was not a part of the network where I went for, uh, for, for, for the breast cancer. And so I called him because I was very upset because he never called me. And, you know, I don't know these people, but I know you. And so I went in to see him and everything. And he looked at all the, because everything is on computer now. He looked at everything and he looked at me and he said, I agree with their findings that yes. And he began to tell me you're in good hands. He told me about each one of the doctors. He said, you got the best of the best. He said, so you're in good hands. And I get all the reports because I'm your doctor. So, you know, if you need to talk to me, you come and you talk to me. Okay. So I remember leaving there and I was going back to work and it was pouring down rain. I remember it was pouring down rain. I was going my way back to work. 
and I was just, you know, crying, you know, on my way back to work. And I heard the Lord say to me, that was your second opinion. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. So when I tell you, I began to praise the Lord in the rain on the way back to work. So, okay. Anyhow, so I go in and I have the surgery. And like I told you, I told the Lord, I didn't want chemo and I didn't want radiation because I, I have a compromised immune system already. So that would just make it worse. And so I went and had the first surgery in July. And so, you know, everything was going great. Everything was great. Um, they told me that, you know, they, you know, they didn't, you know, find anything. It didn't spread, you know, do, you know, they, cause there's some things they can't find out until they go in, they said. So anyhow, it didn't spread or anything, you know, that, you know, it just went to like my lymph nodes. They removed that. Anyhow, that was in July. And so they were going to do the implants and everything. So I was excited about my implants, you know, Hey, and so that was July. So September, I wind up getting an infection and had to go have another surgery. Mm. So I had an infection, had to go back, get another surgery. And I'm like, Lord, who, you know, now, now, according to Deborah's timetable, right? The, the, I should have been done. Okay. So I go into the hospital and he's telling me the doctor, he's like, you know, I've never really seen nothing like this before. You know, he said, um, yeah. Okay. So I go have that surgery in, uh, September and have everything removed and I was going to heal up and we we're going to go back and do it again. I go back and have the third surgery in oh February, 2019. Okay. Now, Hey, I'm ready. You know, according to my timetable, glory to God, you got to get in the press. So that was February, uh, April, 2019. I had the fourth surgery because I developed a, this infection was worse than the other infection. Um, it, I just started swelling up and I was getting pus pockets and I didn't know at the time. And I bless God because that particular Saturday, I was supposed to actually work someplace with Pastor Shana. And I wanted to call her and tell her I couldn't come, but I had given her my word. I said, well, let me go to the doctor and get me some medicine or a shot or he can drain it. And then I could just go on. Right. And so when I got to the office, he looked at me and he said, uh, you know, you're going for emergency surgery today, right? Okay. So now this is the fourth surgery. Okay. So after the fourth surgery and I healed up, I'm just telling you, God was with me the whole time. But before mm -hmm. we got to the surgery, the one day I was sitting on the side of my bed and I heard this, I heard the Holy Ghost say, take back the spoils of the enemy. And right. I looked around right. like, what? Okay, what that mean? You know, I never knew what that meant. And so I began looking that up, that scripture up. And it's in, in 2 Chronicles 20 and 25. And it talks about Jehoshaphat. But it talks about in the biblical times when the, when, when the nations would go against other nations, right? Whoever was the victor, good God Almighty, whoever won, you were able, because you won, you were able to go mm -hmm. and get yeah. the spoils yeah. from the people that lost. So, yeah. you know, they cattle, they gold, they silver, mm -hmm. they oxen, whatever they had, you got to get it back. It became yours now because you mm -hmm. won the victory. And David instituted that when they got the spoils back, they were dedicated, glory God, to the house of the Lord. They would dedicate the spoils. They would have a, a, an altar where they would split the animals and they would make a sacrifice unto the Lord because of the victory, because they have won glory to God, because mm -hmm. God was on their side. Mm -hmm. And so when I got that word, I realized God had given me a prophetic message. What he was, this Amen. was before the first surgery. What he was telling Amen. me was you come in out you gonna have the victory mm -hmm. and when you come out i want you to take mm -hmm. back the spoils of the enemy mm -hmm. i want you to take back your joy mm -hmm. i want you to take back your peace glory to god amen Hallelujah. amen glory to god when he told me that mm -hmm. i just began to praise mm -hmm. god he said take back the spoils mm -hmm. of the enemy glory to god and from that That's moment right. when he told me that i already knew right there i knew glory to god mm -hmm. that i was coming out victoriously mm -hmm. glory to god I didn't know what it's way gone. it was going to turn, how it was going to work, but because I had the word of the Lord, glory to God, I knew that I was going to come out victoriously, glory to God. And that's all we need. That's all we need is a word from the Lord. And that's why I say whatever 
you're going through. Glory to God. Get in the face of God. Evangelist yeah. Mary said when she went through, she laid prostrate out to the Lord. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we got to lay down. Glory to God. Oh, and amen. go in and press into yeah. God. Press yeah. in prayer. Press in fasting. Glory to God. Press Hallelujah. In praise and press mm -hmm. in Hallelujah. worship. Glory mm -hmm. to God. And get mm -hmm. your answer for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So Amen. the testimony didn't just stop mm -hmm. there. I bless God. Who Jesus. So you, I told you. you that I told the Lord, I said to the Lord, I didn't want chemo and I didn't want radiation. So about six months after my surgery in April, the fourth surgery, the oncologist called me in to see him. I'm trying to figure out what he want. You know, I done been this old. What does he want? Yeah, I said that. What does he want? And so, because that's the one that does the chemo. So I'm like, well, what do he want with me? And so I go in there and I sit down and, and I'm, I'm going to be honest. I was a little perturbed. Why are you calling me in here? I, t I was like, Lord, I said, I didn't, you know, I'm just going mm -hmm. this. I'm just saying what I was doing mm -hmm. now. I had to repent. Yeah. yeah. And he said to me, he said, well, Miss Morrison, I call you in here because I'm a part of your treatment plan. I've been following you from the first day you laid on the table. Good God almighty. He said, but I couldn't touch you because you kept having infections. Oh, glory to God. He said, because with chemo and radiation, he said, you have to get it within the first six months of your surgery, because if you don't, you're no longer a candidate for chemo or radiation. I bless God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So he said, here's what we're going to do for the next five years. You need to take this pill every night at the same time. I bless God. Hallelujah. Because he Amen. answered that prayer. I tell mm -hmm. you, we, when we pray and we ask mm -hmm. God for things, we don't know how God's going to work that thing out, mm -hmm. but God's yeah. going to work that thing out. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. He going to yeah. work it out. Yeah. Hallelujah. The way yeah. he sees fit. The way he worked Amen. it out, I had to get infections. I wasn't happy about it. I'm not going to lie, but listen to this. Hallelujah. Because the Bible tells us his ways are not our ways. Glory yeah. to God. You can't tell God how to work that thing out when you pray and ask him to work Come it on, out preach. he gonna do it the way he want to do yeah. it preach thank it thank you Jesus. thank you lord so oh god I, whew, okay mm, yes. that's just a personal thing with me because see with the god the testimonies of god are real and so I know him as Jehovah Rapha. Uh -huh. I know him Amen. as the Lord God, my uh -huh. I know him as the Lord yes. God, yes. my way yes. maker, glory to God, because mm -hmm. he made a way for me. He mm -hmm. worked it out for me, glory yeah. to God. Thank and you, I bless God for his healing and his, because yes. nobody could do that but God. Oh, Hallelujah, yeah. glory oh, to God. And I just bless you. him and I Thank just you, love him and I just share yes. my testimony. Anybody want to listen, I'm going to tell you about the Lord, my God. Right. I'm going to yeah. tell you how he works right. that thing out. I'm yeah. going to tell you how he can turn yeah. things around in yeah. your life. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. I don't want to take up all the time. I know y'all got testimonies and I know y'all want to talk, so I'm going to let y'all talk, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What a blessing. What a blessing. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you. Hey, man, that was Thank good. That was, that was awesome. Thanks for sharing that. That was well Amen. needed. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Mm. Thank you, Lord. You know, and it's interesting that I really want to go back to that point that you made, Elder, that mm -hmm. you prayed to God for one thing and he answered. Yes. But he didn't answer the way you thought, right. but he still answered. Yes, he did. And I just don't know who needs to hear that on tonight mm -hmm. because sometimes we think God ain't answering our prayers. Mm -hmm. But you said they came in the form of infections. Right. Wow. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So you had to go through several infections. Mm -hmm. So so he would answer your prayer of not getting the chemo radiation. That's that's powerful. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I I think a lot of us are in awe because you and um, Evangelist Mac y'all laid some stuff on us. Mm -hmm. I mean, Evangelist Mac to go through. Wow, loss mm -hmm. at, 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 at the highest, one of the highest levels. Right. And then stop, mm -hmm. you have to go through your own personal fight, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and I want to encourage the ones out there who's watching on Facebook, 
you know, because it might be some of y'all out there that's fighting, yeah. fighting for your life. Yeah, mm -hmm. amen. Fighting for your life. But uh, Evangelist Max said she had to lay prostrate. Mm -hmm. You know, that means she had to change her position. Right. You know, because she was in the fight of her life. I just didn't want to take that lightly because people always ask, how did you get the strength to make it through that? Right. For mm -hmm. both of you guys, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how did you get, I mean, infection after infection and, and you know, for you, Elder Morrison, and then you, uh, Evangelist Parker, you know, the valley of the shadow of death, you was walking through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. my goodness. Mm -hmm. But God. But God. God. But, Thank but you, God. And, and, and you're wow. so right. Thank you. Amen. And, and, you know, it's all I could tell you is that when you walk through something like that, and I'm sure Evangelist uh, Matt can, can attest to this. When you walk through something like that, what you're talking about, the valley or the shadow of death, and you come through that thing, you know that nobody bring you out but God. Yes. Hallelujah. It just does something mm. to your, your faith yes. level. It does something mm. to your praise level. It does something to your worship Amen. level. Glory to God. It just Amen. gives you a different perspective Amen. of what's important and mm. what's not. Mm. Mm. Amen. Uh, I'm, right. I'm getting chills, y'all. I'm trying yeah, to contain good. myself, mm. but my God, mm. I, I really want to just yeah. wow. Mm. Yeah. yeah. The resounding theme awesome. when Deacon Wise asked Wallace, they had to go to their own valley of the shadow of death. Right. And then Missionary right. Valerie had to almost walk through the valley. Well, she was there. Right. The valley of mm -hmm. the shadow of death. And now we're hearing it again. Mm -hmm. Valley of the shadow of death. But the Bible says, but I will fear no evil. Yeah. Yes. That's yes. yes. it. He and said, I'm for you me. are you with me. me. That's it. That's it. Right. God is your staff. Comfort they comfort, comfort me. me. Yes, they do. <laughs> and we have heard tonight how God has comfort y'all. Come yeah. on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, my goodness. And you know, mm -hmm. our trials only make us strong. Man. Yeah. When my son died, it made me strong. I didn't realize the rat then because I was hurting so bad. So when my husband died, I just, when he was dying, I asked him, Lord, so don't let my husband suffer. I said, if you're going to take him, just go ahead on and take him, Lord. And that's what God did. It made me strong. When I was dying over the cancer, I did not cry because I knew that God was going to deliver me one way or the other. Mm -hmm. If I died, I was going to end up in heaven. Mm -hmm. And if not, you know, it, it's it's God. It's God got the power over all of us. Mm -hmm. We can't say what we what what gonna happen or what gonna not. Only God knew that this was gonna happen to me before it even happened. That's mm -hmm. it. So Amen. I went to God with. It. He said, "Cast <laughs> your cares upon me, and I give you rest." It, That's it. I thank the Lord. I don't look like what I went what I went through, all but right, God man. made me strong. People, I'm telling you. I had a vision about the Lord. I heard a voice say, Mary, and my spirit, I was in a dream. Uh, or I don't know. I said, yes, Lord. He said, do you love me? I said, yes, Lord. He said, get up. I saw hmm. my body in the bed. I got up out of my body. Where I went, I do not know. But mm. only thing I can tell you, when I woke up, I had both of my hands clapping together, praising my God. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. That was awesome. Amen. God said, I'll never leave you nowhere. I'll ever forsake you. That's it. And God don't lie. Whatever happened, I don't know what's going to happen to me tomorrow, but God knows whatever happened to me, yeah. my Lord. I'm in God's hand. Yes. Amen. And that's all that matters. That's, that's it. it. I'm in his hand. Mm. And, and, and that's it. And that's it. And I, when I was going through I um, focused on scriptures. You know, I had to continue mm -hmm. to feed myself the word of God because, you know, I was sick. So I was home. And so, you know, and I just had to just feed myself the word of God and, 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 and just cut off. I'm, I'm just going to say nonsense, you know, that people that were just 
No, so you to, you to go over here, you got to be in faith. You know, you got yeah. to be in faith. And 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 when we talk, I want to hear faith. I don't want to hear no woe is me. And you know, no. And I and and so when you're going through that, you have to make sure even the people that surrounding you, your inner circle, they have got to be people that's going to pray and lift you yeah, up and fast, yeah, glory yeah. to God, who's not gonna wallow in a pity party, glory to God, who gonna lift you up in prayer and gonna say, let's pray. You know, you can't fast right now, let me fast for you because I know you're going through. So you have to have like a village Amen. around you um, um, of praying people. You need people in your life who's gonna pray Amen. and intercede for you, glory Amen. to God. Amen. And I just believe that, you know, even going through that, you your support system is very, very important when you're going through the shadow mm -hmm. to the valley of death. Glory yes. to God. Yes. And um, I just bless God. And, and I know, um, Deacon Ron, you can have your own testimony of what you went through. Amen. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think I think we all um, we all can. Uh, we all have uh, uh, different testimonies, but uh, the same outcome, you know, God. You know, mm -hmm. we we've all been in 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 in, in, um, in in the midst of um, um, you know, situations, circumstances where we couldn't get ourselves out of it, right? And we we know that it was God when it was done, and mm -hmm. um, you know, that's uh, you know, I was thinking about when you were speaking, mm -hmm. um, how um, you know, you just you know, uh, the the woman, you know, she she had faith. You know, and I think that's where, where all of our testimonies come into play at. Um, we, we, we have to have faith. Um, I, I, I didn't know that I was going to be able to walk again, but I had faith that, I, that I'd be able to walk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just like, um, you, know, um, you know, I don't walk like I used to, but I, I can still walk. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, just, I just praise God because... Um, you know, even when, when I was in the hospital for five months, um, you know, by myself, uh, you know, sleeping by myself at night, um, you know, that was my time that, that I, that I spent with him. And I got, I got a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of revelation. Um, just mm -hmm. like you, I never cried. I never asked why, mm -hmm. you know, why me, you know, because, you know, it's the same thing, you know, uh, why ask, why me? When you're blessed, you don't ask why me. Right. You know, and, you know, and, and the answer is going to be God's going to say, why not you? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you know, yeah. whenever you're going through something, he's going to say, why not you? Yeah. You know, he, he, he picked, he picked us because right. he know that we can handle whatever we're going through. Right. So why, why not you? Mm -hmm. So when you're blessed then you say, wow, you know, why me, God? Well, why not you? Same right. thing. Mm -hmm. Why not you? You know, mm -hmm. we all we all go through things, you know, so that we can be uh, a blessing to the body. You know, the Bible said that we're all fitted and joined together where each joint supplies the next. Right. So um, I just thank God for um, mm -hmm. everybody, you know, me here and everybody's um, um, their, their testimony. It, it inspires and it, it encourages me. Mm -hmm. um, and it, again, you know, just faith. You know, had we not had faith right. and we just said, OK, what was me? Okay, you know, you got me, and we just throw our hands up. Where will we be? That's right. You know, but That's if right. you don't, if you don't have the faith, you know, uh, that moves that move mountains. Then mm -hmm. you know, you're you're just you're just you're just going to be uh, you you dead in the water. Right. So I, I think it's very important that um you know that that we just continue to exercise our faith, um, especially you know in in these times here. You know, we don't know. Um, how it's going to happen, and and and, and we, we know how it's going. We know uh, that God is going to do it, right. but you know all, all the ins and outs. That's not our business, and yeah, and we're not concerned with that. So right. you know, just having faith that that what we believe in is going to come to pass according to His time. You know, I think that's I think that's a good place for us all. So mm -hmm. uh, you know, I I really enjoy hearing all the testimonies that. And uh, it, it, again, it just inspires and encourages me furthermore. Right. Amen. 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 And we do have some people watching yeah. on Facebook Live. For, so for these last couple minutes for you guys on Facebook Live, if you have any questions or comments that you would like to ask 
Elder Morrison or Evangelist Mac, please do so now. Um, and then two uh, ladies, you know, as you guys are speaking, I was listening to everybody. Um, you guys, it's, it's like we go through for somebody else. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. You yes. know, if you guys wanted to went, got on the other side of through, you want to be sitting here witnessing to us today. Right. And it might be somebody on Facebook Live or on here that want to give up. Right. Because they may or may not have breast cancer. You know, they might have cancer. They might be experiencing loss right now. Like mm -hmm. Mother Mac, she experienced loss. Mm -hmm. So if that's you on Facebook Live, we want to hear from you. We, we showed up to encourage you. Amen. You know, these what mighty women of God share their testimonies because they're living Episcopals of, look what God did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. just waiting for those comments. Um, uh, Elder, I, I do have a question for both of you guys, you ladies. Again, we admonish you guys for uh, surviving um, breast cancer. Uh, I always tell people it never had you, you had it. Mm -hmm. It never had you. Mm -hmm. um, I have two a question to ask you guys. What advice would you give somebody that's going through breast cancer now? I mean, we, you gave a lot, but just mm -hmm. that might be going through right now at this moment. And the other question and or um, how did you know the moment you were made whole like the woman in the scripture? Hmm. Okay. You want me to go first or evangelist uh, Matt? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Just just go well, ahead. I can say I can say for once, you got to have faith, strong faith in God. You know, I was raised up in the church. And faith without work is dead. That's mm -hmm. what I said. And it made me feel that I'm more than a conqueror. I conquer all this by the grace of God. I couldn't do it by myself. Mm -hmm. I can't do anything by myself. Mm -hmm. I have to rely on God for everything. And everything that happened, it makes me stay on my knees. It makes me fast. It's made all through the day. Call on the name of the Lord. Glorify him. Call he is God. He is Yahweh. And that's what takes me through the day. I'm telling you, I have people. I have people talk about me. One girl cursed me. Would you know I did? I gave it to God. I said, Lord, help her. Help her. She don't know what she's doing. She don't know what she's doing. Because we are children of God. And when you are children of God, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Mm -hmm. No matter what happened in your life, mm -hmm. faith. Mm -hmm. Keep the faith in God. Don't give up on God. Mm -hmm. We all be tested. Look mm -hmm. at Job. Look what all Job lost. Mm -hmm. Job mm -hmm. was tested. Mm -hmm. And God yeah. brought him through all of that. And what all we go through we go through, David said, I fought a good, Paul said, I fought a good fight. Now I'm going home to receive my crown. Whatever we go through, fight that good fight of faith. Because we're not going to be on this earth always. We can't praise God in our, when we're dead. Let's give him the glory. No matter what, what situation we in, give Amen. God all the glory. Because the glory that belongs to him. Amen. And that's how we're going to make it. Saints mm -hmm. of saints of God, we got to be, we got to depend on God for everything, mm -hmm. for yeah. everything. That's and we're going to make it like that, you know, we're going to make it. We are covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. So we will make it. And that's all I have to say. Well, I've been talking about Beautiful. God all night long. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um, I think you asked a question. How did I know that I was made whole like the woman, right? And I go back to the word that the Lord gave me when he told me to take back the spoils of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And that was a prophetic mm -hmm. word that the Lord spoke to me. Mm -hmm. And that word meant that the only way that I could take back the spoils, I had to live. <laughs> mm -hmm. I had to be victorious in order to take back the spoils of the enemy. And so at that point, I, I, I knew that, that God was up to something. 
Mm -hmm. I, I knew that, you know, uh, like, again, we don't know how he's going to work it out, but God going to work the thing out. He going to work mm -hmm. it out. And I started, you know, even in just sitting down and thinking, because I had a lot of time to sit and think. I certainly did. And, you know, I just meditated on what the word of God said. And one of the scriptures that I love is for, I know the thoughts that I think towards you said the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil to give you an expected end. And I focused on that because there was an end for me, right? God had already saw the beginning. He saw the middle and he saw the end. And the God that I serve, he knew that this day was coming and every provision, yeah, this yeah. is how I encourage myself and every provision that I need for where I'm at now, yeah, yeah. it's already been made. He's yeah. already done it. So I just got to live to get to that expected end. And I just kept focusing on that and when people would talk to me i said i'm, I'm working towards my expected end because god got an expected end for me his thoughts his plans for me not evil but of good glory to god Amen. and and that's what i just kept repeating to myself and believing and for anybody that's going through you know their own you know diagnosis or whatever it is you just got to get in that quiet place first of all within yourself because yes. a lot of times, you know, I remember myself when I got the, the news, the diagnosis, you know, they're giving you information and we want to do this and want to do that and run over here and do this. And it's so much coming at you that it will overwhelm you because you're trying to process what? Do who? How? And you just got everything coming at you because now you're sitting there in that moment thinking about, okay, what about the kids? What about the dog? What about the this and, and the this? And oh my God, and my job and my bills. And you know, you, you just, and, but you got to get even your spirit mm -hmm. in that quiet place yeah. mm -hmm. so you yeah. can commune yeah. with God. Mm -hmm. And I think Amen. that's where it starts. You've Amen. got to slow everything down, mm -hmm. get the information you need, mm -hmm. take it all in, but do not let it overwhelm you mm -hmm. and take that to God mm -hmm. and let God give you directions mm -hmm. from there and that's mm -hmm. what i would say because that's what i had to do i had to quiet myself down mm -hmm. and take my concerns to god mm -hmm. and listen for god to answer yeah. and he did amen 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 wow. amen wow. absolutely powerful testimonies ladies and thank you so much for sharing thank you so much do we have any uh, anybody else to have questions or comments as we're wrapping it any questions or on the book live, Mother Kitty said, Praise God. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Pray, Just praise say a God. Shout out to my niece that's on the line, uh, Angel Walker. That's my niece. I wanted to say hello to her. Thanks for coming on, sweetie. Hey, Angel. <laughs> Amen. 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 So um, I'm just uh, being led to pray um, right now. There's no other final. Uh, comments or questions. Elder Morrison, she prayed this morning a mighty prayer for people who was facing anxiety and stress during this time. And even now, uh, uh, Sister Angel Rocker says, hey, thanks for having me. Um, <laughs> even now, though, even now, uh, there might be those who silently suffering mm. who might have got that phone call from the doctor. Right. Okay. Uh, we know that this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, there might be some watching now who have lost a loved one to breast cancer or cancer. Mm -hmm. This is also uh, Domestic Violence Month. Right. And there might be somebody that's watching who's in an abusive relationship mm -hmm. and they don't know how to get out. They don't know how to stop it. Um, that's why we showed up tonight. Mm -hmm. We show we mm -hmm. showed up to tell you that all of us on here are overcomers. Yeah, we yeah. have all overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the, our testimonies. Yeah. And so, as I go into prayer, I just want to encourage everybody. Let you know, these women were sent here tonight to show you and prove to you that you can overcome. You Amen. can overcome. 
-hmm. Whatever the situation is, even the shadow of the valley of death, hallelujah, you can overcome. And why can we overcome? Because Jesus, he already whipped death, hell, and the grave for us. And I don't even, I don't know who needs to hear that tonight, but somebody needs to hear that Jesus overcame, he shed his blood. Mm -hmm. And these ladies were a testimony tonight that they were recipients of the blood exchange. Yes, Lord. Thank Mm. you. Thank you, Lord. And if Jesus could do it for them, if Jesus could do it for me, Mm-hmm. If Jesus can do it for Pastor Wallace, if he could do it for Deacon Ryan, if he can do it for Mother Wallace, if he could do it for mm-hmm. Missionary Valley, if he could do it for Evangelist Sophia, we have showed mm-hmm. up just uh, looking at us. Mm-hmm. A lot of us should have been dead a long time ago. Oh, I'm, just flow- I'm starting the prayer now. I'm just flowing right now. But mm-hmm. somebody needs to, somebody might feel like they're in the valley of the shadow of death. But we right now are your cloud of witnesses. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, Lord. Mm-hmm. Yes. Thank you, Lord. If you see us all on the screen right now and you're looking at our faces, we are the cloud. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Look at our faces. Yes. The very aspect that we are breathing is testimony yes. that Amen. God is real. Mm-hmm. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God Amen. is real. Thank yes. you, Jesus. He is. Somebody you, on the line on Facebook might need to recommit to Jesus tonight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 Because he came mm-hmm. to give life and life eternally. These yes, sisters Lord. just witnessed about how he extended their life here. My Lord. But they yes. already got yes. eternal life over there. Hallelujah. Yes. So, Father yes. God, we thank you for life yes, on tonight. Yes. Hallelujah. And, yes, Father yes. God, we praise you for these women of God. Hallelujah. Mm. Even the tears mm. that have been shed, Father God. Oh, I thank you right now that you promised us that you got a jar in heaven that you're mm. collecting oh, for the tears. Oh, Hallelujah. Jesus. Nothing in this life is going to go to waste, not even the oh, testimonies yeah. of God. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Hallelujah. We just oh, witness on tonight that Jesus. your ways is not our ways. Hallelujah. Yes. And your thoughts. It's not our thoughts. It might be somebody going through right now, hallelujah, that got the car that they got cancer, hallelujah. It might be somebody going through right now that's going through relationship problems. It might be somebody going through financial problems, hallelujah. It might be somebody in need of a healing, hallelujah, hallelujah. But we, hallelujah, are the cloud of witnesses, King Jesus, to hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the world know, hallelujah, hallelujah, yes, that you yes, are the risen Savior, hallelujah, yes, hallelujah. and that yes. whatever is needed is found yes. in you, hallelujah. Yes, Not only can you do a blood exchange, you can do a strength exchange, yes. hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. In the yes. name of Jesus, when yes, we yes. are weak, you are strong, yes, hallelujah. Yes. And some of us got on the line tired tonight, but yes. like Elder said, we press. Hallelujah. We press tonight to show up because you called us to be the cloud at this hour. Hallelujah. And since we are the cloud, the burden has gotten lifted. Even the heaviness of being tired or being weighed down has been lifted because, hallelujah, we have got a glimpse of you, King Jesus. Hallelujah. We have got a glimpse of you, Most High God. Hallelujah. We have got a glimpse of you, Elohim through the testimonies hallelujah we have got a glimpse of you through the testimonies that's why you sent it that's why you had us to endure it because it was about your glory hallelujah and since it was about your glory we gonna give you the glory on tonight hallelujah we worship you on tonight we open up our mouths and we praise you right now hallelujah for the one that might be in a hospital fighting for their life right now they might have 
have COVID-19. They might have cancer. Hallelujah. They might be in the valley of the shadow of death. They might be in bereavement. They might be in mourning right now. Hallelujah. We're going to lift up a praise to you for them. For the ones that can't even open up their mouth. The ones that are eating their tears for food right now. Hallelujah. We're going to worship you in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Because we are witnesses of the other side of through. Hallelujah. Lord. We are the witnesses of the yes, other Lord side Jesus. of through. Thank we have God. made it to the other side, hallelujah, of the mountain. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, I thank you, thank hallelujah, you. for everybody, hallelujah, that has showed up and been unashamed of their testimony. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Oh, we're unashamed tonight. God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We let our light shine. And since we're shining, we're driving out the kingdom of darkness yes, right now hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. In and whoever is watching, who's ever yes. online right now that's walking in darkness, I admonish you to come out right now in the Father. name of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. In the, the blood of Jesus works. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes. The blood of Jesus works. And it drives Father. out darkness. Father. It drives out demons. It drives out all manners of sickness, diseases, and ailments. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God, and we bless you on tonight. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. And we thank you for long life for everyone on here. You are a life extender. Yes, God. Yes, God. And since you. you have been this good to us to give us one more day, we Hallelujah. will serve you until the day you close our eyes over here. Yes. Hallelujah. You, until we step into eternity yes, with Lord. you, you we Jesus. will continue to serve and give our testimony. Yes. Thank yes. You, Hallelujah. It is Thank in you. Jesus' name. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. We bless you, Father God. Thank you. 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 Mm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, God. Yes, Amen. God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, Jesus. Thank, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I'm sorry, y'all. I just felt that Thank thing. I, I don't know who's watching, but I, I felt that thing. I mm. felt that thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank you again, worthy. Elder Deborah Morrison, for sharing. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. For evangelist Mary Mack for coming on to be our guest on tonight. Yes. You, your yes. presence has truly blessed us, sister. Don't mm. be a stranger. Come back again for you Amen. truly are a living testimony. Yes, hallelujah. Yes, so, you, hallelujah. I believe on next week, next Thursday, same time, same place. Who's up on deck? Is it Missionary Valerie? Or is I it think so. or is She's smiling. Sophia? She's smiling. That means it's her. Right. Evangelist <laughs> Valerie, tag you it next week. Tag you it next week. Okay. We heard a powerful testimony from you last week, but you're going to give a different spin on the missionary testimony. Right. Yep, yep. The missionary. <laughs> if you guys don't know, Missionary Valerie is a missionary to Africa. Mm. She Hallelujah. will be going to Congo in December. Right. And she will be back in Malawi next year. So mm, she's going to yes. come on and share about her testimonies in Africa, right, yeah. Missionary Amen. Valerie? Yes, yes, Amen. yes. And, <laughs> and bring a friend? Yep, yep. All right. Yeah. All right. The, yeah. Once Thank again, the fire. The mm -hmm. fire tonight. Thank you, wow. yes. mm -hmm. thank you Jesus. Amen. So we thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you guys next week at 7 o'clock right here on Facebook Live, WCM Interactive.